Hey everybody, this is Ray Ogilvy from Hartsville, South Carolina. Now here's an interesting object. This is a concretion. It's the result of water flowing through the ground. As the water flows, it picks up minerals from the soil and deposits these minerals around objects in its path. Different soils would contain different kinds of minerals. Soils with a lot of calcite in them would produce calcite concretions. Fine grain mud deposited by rivers might produce mudstone concretions. Concretions can sometimes have fantastic fossils in them. This concretion found in Morocco contains the remains of a lungfish. But the soil this concretion came from is mostly sand and clay with a good bit of iron mixed in. So this concretion is composed of mainly iron oxide and a few other minerals. Now there's not a lot of animal remains in this soil, but there is a good bit of plant material. And the same minerals that formed this iron oxide concretion can replace the organic compounds that make up this wood and change it into petrified wood. This is a piece of petrified wood here, and you can clearly see the grain patterns. And here's another piece, not far away. And you can also see the grain patterns in this piece. But check this out. That doesn't sound like wood. The material that made up the original wood has been replaced by iron oxide and a few other minerals. But even though we sometimes find petrified wood associated with these iron oxide concretions, I've never found it inside one of the concretions. This concretion probably started off as just a few grains of sand coated with iron oxide and kept growing until it reached this size. Now there's a little more to the story. Water would not be flowing through the ground all of the time. There would be dry periods. During these dry periods, water trapped inside the concretion would work its way out. And on its way out would carry iron oxide from inside the concretion to the outer edges. Leaving the concretion hollow with loose iron oxide powder inside. 
and this gives these iron oxide concretions another common name, Indian paint pot. Native Americans would use this iron oxide powder as a pigment in paints. Iron oxide powder is an excellent pigment and is still used in paints today. Native Americans would only have needed to have mixed this with something sticky. They might have used either bird eggs or fish eggs. Colors produced could range from reddish brown to tan. Of course this wasn't the only source of pigment available to Native Americans. They could have used charcoal to produce black and chalk or light colored clay to produce white and various parts of plants to produce other colors. With these pigments they could reproduce all of the colors we see around us.